Well, it's good to be with you today, folks. I, I have to admit right out loud, it's with just a little bit of trepidation that I'm addressing you today. I've been thinking about exactly how I would address you, and I hope that the things that I have to say will be beneficial to you, and you'll recognize the, the spirit in which they're given. I'm going to do something that I normally would not do, and that's that I think this message is going to be important enough that I'm going to ask each of you who do view this message, if you would share it with your circle of influence and encourage them to do the same. I think this is a message that's very vital right now in our community, and I think it will help as we collectively come together and try to do what we can to be team players. So with that being said, let me just uh, start by telling you that I've been involved in a lot of calls over the last several weeks, some at the federal level, some at the state level, and some at the local level. They've been good calls and they've kept us right in the middle of the things that are happening. And the first thing I'd like to do is just share with you some of the real, the basic, probably 5,000 foot view of what I've seen happening over this last little while and share some of those things with you that I think that would be beneficial to you. I, we had the opportunity yesterday to hear from the White House and we heard from some pretty important people. Actually, the, uh, the two that addressed us was this Dr. Arthur, uh, can't say his last name, I should be able to. I think it's Fossey, Dr. Arthur Fossey. He's the one that is with the president often when they're doing the press conferences. And Larry Kudlow, the assistant to the president on economic policy. And they, they address several things with us. Obviously, I think we've all heard almost to the point that we don't wanna hear anymore about the virus and how it's affecting us. I think it's important for us to continue to follow because things are coming out pretty much every day that are a little bit new to this process. But a couple things that they talked to us about that I thought would be good to share with you. There's a lot of fact and myth out there and it's important that we separate the two. Uh, make sure that you're getting your information from a trusted source. And, and maybe even check and double check it, before, especially before you share it with others, because there are a lot of things that are being said that are not true. There are other things that are being said that are changing and developing, and so they may be saying it a little different today than they were a week or two weeks ago. And so make sure you're following that. Another one that I thought was really important is the fact that there's a lot of fraud and scam going on right now. And that's just unbelievable to me that there'd be people in this situation who try to take advantage. Make sure that you don't, don't get taken advantage of. Make sure sure that, uh, again, double check sources before, especially before you ever give anybody any personal information. The mental health is probably a big thing too. Make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Be well. If you, if you need help, reach out for help. Those are the, the really important things that I thought happened uh, with that meeting. Um, they did do something that I thought was quite impressive. They had taken a, a map, map of the United States and they've done a study and taken each individual state and talked about where we are and what the, the kind of gave us a forecast of what the future looks like. So as I look through Idaho's, they're telling us that through the studies they've done, we will probably peak about April 26th. And their numbers look pretty dire actually. I hope that we don't hit the numbers they're saying. They're looking at somewhere around 400 deaths when we hit that peak time on April 26th. Right now, the last report I read, we have nine, and I hope that, uh, I sure hope that forecast is wrong. But just a couple of things I, I, I thought, you know, I ought to share with folks, because I think many of us are getting a little bit uneasy with the things that are being asked of us, and it's somewhat understandable, because right in our own community right now, we don't have a big problem, at least not that we're aware of. And so sometimes it seems like that we're overreacting. But I think that this is a time, a really good time for us to be true team players, to be willing to make some sacrifices for the benefit of our entire community and society. And with that in mind, I just want to review with you this morning, the uh, Southeastern Idaho Public Health folks put out some, some guidelines. These are not gonna be new to you, but my ask of you as the mayor of the city of Chubbuck is let's follow these as closely as, closely as we can during this next month and see if we can make sure and, and keep ourselves just as healthy as possible as a community. The first thing was to follow the governor's stay home order, uh, practice social distancing, avoid crowds, and maintain a six foot distance from other people when possible. Limit unnecessary travel, stay at home if you're sick, practice social distancing, Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, 
use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue or your sleeve when you cough or sneeze. Avoid touching your eyes, no nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Cleaning and disinfect in disinfecting surfaces and objects that may be contaminated with germs using a disinfecting solution. Uh, can cancel out-of-town vacations or travel out of state. Use drive-through and delivery services for everyday errands where possible. Persons at risk or in severe illness should consider sheltering in place. Only leave your home for essential activities or to work for an essential business. Do not host any or attend any gatherings. Persons with recent travel to an area having widespread community transmission or a shelter in place order should shelter in place at home until 14 days after their return. Create a plan for how to safely care for a household member if they become ill. It seemed like a, some pretty interesting things to be doing and again I just want to tell you that I'm so grateful for this community and the way that we have come together and work together. They are telling us that these next three to four weeks are going to be very telling and so I would just I would encourage each one of us to do everything that it was with our, within our power to accomplish the goals that have been set here. And if we do, we believe that we can get things back to normal just as quickly as possible. Uh, I hope that, again, if anybody has any particular questions, there are hotlines that you can call. The, the Southeastern Idaho Public Health District is a good place for you to start. But I think the most important thing is just to take care of yourselves. Let's be aware of our neighbors and make sure if there are those around us who have need that we're doing what we can to help them. But again, most importantly, let's follow these orders as closely as we can for this next month and see what we can do to, to dissolve this issue around us. I, uh, again, I've, I've struggled a little bit about how to do this today. I want to leave on a very positive note. I know we can do this. You know, I, I uh, had the opportunity when I was a young man, quite a young man, to work with my maternal grandfather and so grateful for him to this day. One of the wisest, uh, most industrious people I've ever known. He was a farmer by trade all of his life and I was asked as a young man to help him build a china cabinet and that was quite an interesting experience. As a young man I remember thinking how slow grandpa was. I couldn't believe how long it took to do certain things and it just seemed to me like we were wasting time. But I'll tell you what, when we got done at the other end of that project, what a beautiful product we had come up with. And I recognized that Grandpa was the kind to measure twice and cut once, and he made sure things were done exactly to the letter. And again, when we got done, what a beautiful product we had there. And I think of that in the regards of what we're asked to do here. Some of it doesn't seem to make sense. We maybe can't see the outcome. But I think if each of us will do our part, to do what we can to make sure these outcomes happen the way they should. When we get to that other end, we will have a beautiful product and be back about activities as they should be. So just grateful to be with this week. Again, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again another day.